So I'm Allison Brager. I'm a neuroscientist. I've been a CrossFit athlete for the past 10 years. I've had the opportunity to uh, compete in the CrossFit Games. Uh, I guess you could say an athlete of the mind. I'm an American soldier and I'm an author of a book on the athlete brain. Years ago, somebody always told me to plan your career around your lifestyle and not your lifestyle around your career. And I feel like after 35 years, I've mastered that. Uh, I grew up in a community that prides itself on athletics um, and the art of teaching discipline, grit, and the pursuit of excellence through sport. A lot of my family um, did not go to college, and so to be pretty much a first-generation college student uh, made me uh, value academics and being a scholar athlete more than anything else. I was a four-year varsity Division I athlete in track and field. Um, and I had a really demanding course load. I was fortunate enough to go to an Ivy League. Through all of that, I would say my secret weapon in terms of making sure that I was not just the top athlete in the school, but also the top student, was making sure I got adequate sleep. Uh, it didn't matter how much homework I had left to finish at, you know, on a school day, um, and that's after training four to six hours a day in gymnastics, dance, and then track and field or cross country. I always made sure I got eight hours of sleep. You know, all the powers that be in terms of new uh, brain connections that form and the enhancements in learning and memory, um, I really do attribute sleep to a lot of my success. I mean, obviously I'm biased, but it, sleep is up there with hydration. So I think, you know, you have hydration, sleep, food, um, you know, then you have all the other basic instincts, survival mechanisms, but we know this from over a hundred years of study now that if you don't get sleep, something bad really happens and something bad will continue to happen unless you get good adequate sleep again. Um, your whole body breaks down, your brain breaks down, and it's not just at like a system level, it's um, you know, individual cells within your body start dying off and um, becoming unhealthy, it's, it's everything. I travel basically to collect science data in realistic settings for the military. So in order to develop uh, and test new ideas in the lab, we have to understand what it looks like in real life. Basically what I'm asked to do is to develop new, new tools and technologies uh, based on the principles of biology and what we know about the biology of sleep in order to help people adjust to time zones very rapidly. The biggest thing from a research side is constantly searching for some new function of sleep. And it's also about finding new biological factors that can be tweaked in some way in order to have humans perform at a higher level under stress and in less optimal conditions. I think that's what keeps me going is the more I learn, the less I know, um, especially when it comes to the brain. Uh, we have all these advanced technologies now to study it at the, the, its whole level from connections between different brain areas down to the single cell. but the more advanced these technologies become, I feel like the less uh, information we, we learn or the more confused we, we are. So I think that's what excites me is there's always something to learn on a daily basis and things are always changing because technology is always changing. I do travel a ton with my job. I am very lucky in that I get to present my science around the world. Last year I traveled almost 150,000 miles and I think I was in a hotel 264 days. In addition to managing my work hours, I just it, try to be as efficient as possible in terms of getting my workout in appropriately. You can see that if I don't have this discipline, how easily it would be for my body to break down. Um, and it hasn't broken down, knock on wood, because I haven't been getting sick more often. All those things that a lot of busy, jet-lagged travelers seem to suffer from, I don't. Um, and I don't think it's genetic, I just think it's because I make my recovery on the road as important as you know my job itself. So one of the, the classic principles of biology is this idea of homeostasis in terms of um, if you overdo something, it requires a period of rest in order to get the system back to normal. But over time, you can actually overwork the system and 
um, reach a whole new breaking point, if you will. Uh, this is sort of the, the bread and butter of uh, athletic training methods and the, the timeline through which amateurs eventually develop into professional athletes. Um, and I think these you know, physiological principles of homeostasis and then reaching this higher level called allostasis are part of the reasons why I love training and um, discipline through sport is because every day you can improve. And of course, the, uh, the level of improvement is changing now for me because I am an older athlete. But at the same time, it just means I have to come up with new techniques and new strategies uh, to combat the, the age factor and the fact that my body doesn't recover like it's 25 anymore. Um, and so that's really what I, what I love about it is, it, you know, I have my, my science in the lab, but I can definitely apply the same principles to my science of sport, if you will.